We're here at Helltech stand at World Time Attack with Matt and Helltech have chosen World Time Attack 2014 as the launch event for their brand new Elite Series ECU. Now Helltech have already got some pretty sophisticated product out there so we thought we'd just take a couple of minutes with Matt to talk about what's different and what's new with the Elite Series. So Matt when we look at uh, the Elite Series compared to your existing Platinum Sports Series can you give us three key points or three differences uh, with the new product? I guess three is a bit hard, but um, I guess the big things for us in particular, drive-by-wire throttle is obviously one of them, dual channel not control, quad cam control, but you know, I think probably the biggest feature for most people is going to be the, um, the self-learning, um, how the ECU can learn parameters of the engine on its own. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. When you say self-learning, uh, I know particularly the uh, way you guys are addressing the auto-tune or self-learning for uh, wideband feedback for air fuel ratio is quite unique and uh, quite sophisticated. Can you tell us how that works? Yeah, it's, um, that, that's a big one. And I was talking to somebody earlier explaining how it works and I'm like, wow, that, that must take up a lot of space in the ECU. Basically what we do, you've got your fuel map. You know, you've, you've seen your videos and you know how to tune an engine. You've got a 3D fuel map. You might have RPM and boost on those axes, um, and there's might be 32 by 32 cells in there. So what we have is we have an identical size map behind that, I guess you'd say, which is essentially your fuel correction map. So you've got your target air fuel ratio map, you've got your fuel map, and then you've got your 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 trim map, your long-term learning map. And in any particular cell that you're at, if your target air fuel ratio doesn't meet your actual air fuel ratio, which is read by the, the wideband, um, the ECU will make a correction in that particular cell and only that cell. So the way a lot of these closed loop or learning systems work is they block things out. So, okay, well maybe below 3000 RPM, that's, that's one whole area. We, we don't do that. It's one individual cell. Uh, and so the entire map can be learned on a cell by cell basis. Uh, on top of that, the Elite Series has, I guess some people call it a Z axis or a Z axis or a fourth axis, where you can actually have multiple fuel maps. So you've got your normal fuel and ignition map, but then you might say, well, I want to have more fuel and ignition maps based on, say, um, the cam position. So you can have a fuel map based on cam position zero, uh, five, 10, 15 degrees. And each of those maps would also have uh, a learning map behind it which would allow corrections. So you can essentially set up your target air fuel ratio map, set up your fuel and ignition map, drive around. The ECU will learn the target versus the actual in each and every individual cell. It'll apply that to a trim map and then you can import all that data straight into your fuel map and learn it to your fuel map. So then you do that a few times and eventually you have next to nothing in your trims because your, your main fuel map has actually learned all those values. So it's a uh, it's a bit complex, uh, it takes quite a bit of memory to do it, but it works really, really well. Now, in terms of how that was traditionally done and the, the problems I see with it is we normally had either just a, an overall trim. So if you move from an area in the fuel map, the main fuel map that was rich, to the next area that was lean, you'd already have a, a negative trim in your closed loop fuel. So hence when you moved into the lean area, instantaneously you had a lean area before the uh, feedback had time to correct. So this now, that'll all be seamless because it, it stores those in that, that trim map. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, spot on. Um, previously, we had systems that sort of block things out at certain loads or certain RPMs. You, you don't. Your fuel map is a lot of little cells, and if you had one cell to the left that was correct, but one on the right was totally way out, then one affects the other. By having a long-term map that works on the same number of cells that you have in your main fuel map, you do away with all those problems. So. Yes, it's memory intensive, but it makes for a much, much better way of doing things. So it's, um, it's been really, really good. We've had a lot of great feedback for it, and people are really liking it. The other thing that you do get is the transient conditions. So when you stab the throttle, um, what throws a lot of these long-term and a lot of the short-term fuel systems out is when you stab the throttle, you've got throttle pump. You need that additional fuel based on the big gulp of air that goes in. Well, if you don't turn off or if you've got no way of tuning that transient condition out of your learning then you learn on information that's not really correct um, so you have a secondary map in there that um, the ECU says okay under certain conditions we're going to turn the learning off or we're going to learn less and that's all programmable as well. Uh, sounds great and I think it's going to uh, be very helpful particularly for those just getting up to speed with tuning. I've got one question that comes from that though is the tuner's job over? Do we, do we need to tune these anymore? <laughs> I've had that question a few times and uh, I think the short answer is no. Um, the field trim map and the long term learning map really is what it is. It's to learn when things go 
off, if you like. So not all fuels are the same. You get fuel at one st service station, it's different to the next. Your injectors start to get a bit of gum in there, but then you put uh, injector cleaner and clean them up. The engine does vary, so it's really to take that. Now, the other thing is, we haven't even touched on the ignition. So let's be honest, the fuel part is what people talk about, but it's the easy part. Uh, the ignition is where it's tough and there's no replacing good feedback, there's no replacing the dyno. As much as a lot of people like to think that their butt dyno is 100% calibrated, it's simply not. So you still got to do the ignition timing. Now the same long term learning can apply on the knock control tables, but the issue is not going to advance that until it knocks them back it off, unlike you can do with a fuel, you can go both directions. Um, that's not the case with the ignition timing. So the tuner's still going to be there to do the timing, they're still going to have to have the right equipment to do that, so I, I don't think the tuner's job is dead. That's good to know. That, that, that gives me it's some still confidence. A job. <laughs> uh, another thing that's on my mind is obviously it's a complete uh, clean sheet of paper approach. Uh, how big a job is it going to be for a tuner that's familiar with your existing Platinum Sport ECUs? How big a job is it going to be for them to get familiar with the new Elite Series? Well, the tuning side of things is very simple very similar. The software looks similar, it feels similar. It is a new platform but it looks and feels very very much the same. The big difference is going to be in the setup actually um, and for the guys that have used that Elite software they'll see it. The easy way to do it with the Elite is you actually before, what guys used to do is they they'd get their wiring diagram and they'd write down on that wiring diagram, oh this output goes to here, this is what I'm doing with that. Now with the Elite it's actually easier to do it the other way around. You open the software, you start a map and you start turning on functions. You say I want to do uh, idle control, I want to do drive by wire throttle control. That will then prompt you to say okay you're doing idle control, you need to wire up an idle speed motor and it gives you the, the options. Where do you want to wire it? Step a motor, click on that, click these wires. Um, digital pulsed output, you click, and so you set it all up in the software and then you can say, okay, print me a wiring diagram. And so the ECU generates you a wiring diagram, you print that out, go to the car, wire it up, um, so the ECU suggests to you what's available, um, what inputs and what outputs you can use for that function, and then tells you how to wire it. So that's, um, that's a fundamental shift in thinking, but it, it makes, it's going to make life easier. So that's going to be the part that people will um, have to get used to, but I think they'll enjoy. It sounds like anything that's going to particularly uh, make the wiring installation simpler has got to be a good thing. We see so many reliability problems from, from that aspect. Look, it's a, it's a great sounding ECU. Personally, I'm excited to get hold of one and see how it pans out. Thanks for taking the time to chat to us, Matt. Always a pleasure, mate. Thank you. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.